guys, Ron here, and for two years now I've had a series where I invite a few other artists and we all design Pokemon based on a prompt or description that I provide to my guests. This time around, I thought I'd invite four other artists and give them a slightly different challenge. I created two unevolved Pokemon, showed my guests their design and type, and then they would have to create evolved forms without knowing their origin, concept, name, stats, or abilities. And now we're finally going to reveal our evolutions to each other. How close was their creation to my evolved form? We'll see right now. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want more of this and check the description for the links to these amazing artists. So the first fake one that I showed everybody was this little guy right here. You guys already saw it, so there's no re there's no reaction from them. <laughs> they already Whoa. know it. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> the name is Hyanir. All right. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> that means Virgo understands. The encroaching Pokemon. Do the abilities work with whatever you guys did? <laughs> <laughs> or like huh. yeah <laughs> kind of uh, wait yeah that's crazy that's actually yes yes yeah. uh, a, a little a little bit but not really what about stats um, yeah. <laughs> kind of, sort of, yeah. No, no. All right, so now we're basically going to go through one by one and see what everybody's evolution was, and then I'll show you guys my evolved form. Bonnie. So, you know, when I looked at this guy right here, I saw so many animals, right? And then specifically, like, a shrew or a rodent in the face, and then I saw the hooves, right? So I'm, like, thinking, like, a deer, especially with the dappling on the back. But then I saw the tusk marks on the chest. And I'm thinking oh. like, that seems like a deliberate pattern. That's where the warthog kind of stuff came in because <gasps> you gave this guy a little bit of a fluff. Yeah, there's fluff. Um, it's fluffy. I kind of came up with my own little names and stuff. You can if you want. <laughs> the, re the reasoning why is just because I needed to set this stage for my my take on the second form to make sense, right? Okay, that said, that's not too far mm -hmm. off from what I was going for. I did some digging, my friend. Ron, you try to pull a, a, a fast one You're on us, my friend. You're not allowed to dig. No digging. So I did some more digging. Turns out I saw a little fella <laughs> who kind of looks sort of like exactly. this guy right here down okay. to the tusks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I said, how do I evolve this little cute little baby deer, right? I'm not going to give away the name. That's going to be for you, Ron, if you want to reveal that. If I'm correct, if my Sherlock Holmes hat is fit on my head tight. But I decided to evolve him into a water deer. Or specifically, colloquially, us Westerners, we might call this guy a vampire deer. Vampire. Perfect. <laughs> Fancy. The pompous Pokemon. Classy. He's got a, a cocky kind of face, a pompous snare, uh, head raised up, almost looking down. After nibbling on bones, I wanted to create a Pokemon who, uh, after some time, instead of chasing after animals and whatnot, its, its fangs have grown out, and the coloration that's on its ascot, uh, as well as its hooves, are not that of blood, of which we might relate to a vampire, but simply fruit juices that it's uh, up, keeps up appearances. What's the what's the dark um, typing then? I dark typing is, I think, its personality. Mm. The kind of character that you that you brought out through the through the face is fantastic. The silhouette Appreciate is amazing. It. Very yeah, nice. I love the coat mm -hmm. that you gave it's, it. Yeah, thank and you. And I love it's, the shiny, the black and white like Nosferatu. Exactly what I was yeah. going for. Old school, <laughs> solid film. <laughs> We're probably all gonna have similar eyes, so like the soul of our Pokemon is probably mm. going to be the same. Oh, for certain. That's very interesting. I, That's cool. Sorry, Virgo, you are going to say? I like the coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 thought, I, I like an ungulate with um, a lot of like fur in the back. It's actually really cute. This is definitely what I wanted you to draw. <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> so like, I hacked your computer. Thank so you. So that's how I had the leg up here. It's pretty cool that actually Vampire also has the same name as Hyanir. And not gonna lie, Hyanir, the <gasps> ear part isn't from deer. So that's a coincidence. Oh. I, I forgot about oh. that. <laughs> so like, okay. Hyanir right. is from like Pioneer. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's what I meant too, Vampire. <laughs> but, but it's cool that it ended up working. Let's do Libris next. Okay. I actually don't have uh, very much setup to do because Bonnie did most of it. Let's go. He definitely did. That's why you went first. <laughs> <laughs> I got you guys. Uh, I'll go ahead and spoil it because as soon as I saw yours uh, run, uh, I saw a Chevrotin or a Mouse Deer. Uh, the Mouse Deer doesn't have the long tail, so I wanted to d do something with that. <laughs> oh, okay. No way. No way. No way. This is not the direction I thought everybody would be going in. That's crazy. 
Yeah, so it is very similar to wait, what Bonnie did. Wait, wait, Geneva wait. has exactly Holy the same God. name. <laughs> That's great. There's no way. What did you do? <laughs> but I went full vampire. This is the bloodthirsty Pokemon. Its hooves make almost no sound, allowing it to stalk prey undetected. When they are ready to strike, they rear onto their hind legs to make their bite even more powerful. Old tales claim that Vampyr can turn into Zubat. Ooh. I like that the fit the head is closer to the pre evolved form than the other one. Yeah. Because of the long tail in, in yours, I wanted to, like, that felt like it maintained some of the mouse <laughs> elements. Uh, so I wanted to keep some rodent-ish features, so I tried to make the face kind of ratty, and the coattails of a tuxedo was the, the perfect solution in my head, yeah. fitting in the the, out, the vampire outfit, but also keeping the long tail that I wanted. Coattails really do work on Pokemon designs, I believe. My final evolution has a, a split tail a little bit. Oh. Mm. Uh, I just do want to make it clear that this is not a bipedal Pokemon. I hope that the way I drew the pose makes it clear that it is rearing up and not standing. Uh -huh. I like that yours is more of a chupacabra, but literally a chupacabra. So it's sure. literally a cabra que chupa. It also looks a bit like the Jersey Devil, if you've ever seen the Jersey Devil. And it's also crazy that you changed the eyes, but I actually really like these eyes. These are I really like these eyes a lot. It involves your eyes. Yeah. Although I did use the green eyes for the shiny. From Gryffindor to Slytherin. Bonnie, Libris, both of you did very similar concepts, but I love how both are very individual to your it's so stuff. So true. Because we did co-hack. We had to combine PCs to hack Ron's PCs. So <laughs> <laughs> that makes so much sense now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you both like integrated clothes like That's differently, facts. but also like very well. Yeah. But they're like similar, but yeah. different. It's definitely the way a seasoned like Fakemon artist would do it. When I was designing Hyenir, I was thinking of Libras. I'm like, I, I knew that oh. whenever I think of Libras, I think of uh, Fakemon that have like browns. It's like very comfy <laughs> colors. And I knew that he would do this exact color scheme, honestly. <laughs> uh, Virgo, you're next. Oh, Ron, you should have saw it coming. I shouldn't have put you in this episode. <laughs> You see, you guys say that you have hacked into Ron's brain. <laughs> I did not have to hack. I mind read that mind <laughs> so thoroughly. First of all, I did two evolutions. What? So it's already it's already going to be that. Oh um, my god. Here's the first evolution. Oh, oh, oh my no. The, first of all, the Dex page, so sexy. Oh so sexy. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> it's adorable. It's really yeah. good. It's I think I we went in a little bit different directions. <laughs> Night, no. Um, no! Don't, don't, don't do it. it! I knew you were gonna do it. <laughs> Not a croc. That, oh, <laughs> that's oh, funny. That's so clever. That's really good. <laughs> the first stage, which was um, Hyenir, is a kind of a riverbank bushes Pokemon that hunts in the bushes or, or, or what's the word forages. Forge. This is in the river, which is why it butts heads often with Croconaw. It has one final rival. When it finally evolves into a matriarchal pack hunter or crunch. Oh, oh wow. my god. Yeah. My favorite this is my favorite Pokemon of all time. <laughs> it's amazing. So as you can see, not a croc is the relay Pokemon. It's it's doing its like races, but like, you know, just swimming a little bit in a in a small uh, <laughs> small uh, body of water. And or crunch is the marathon. It is the long distance. It can go far into the ocean. It is this maybe an all-terrain kind of Pokemon, which indeed does rival Garchomp sometimes because of convergent evolution. Yeah. It's not just an orca though, it is also a leopard seal. Oh. When people try to do leopard seals, they do a lot of too many like random spots. This is a good way to have a uniform like uh, order to the spots while still being spots. Oh, it definitely has also um, the two lines like Garchomp on the leg. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what I took in, into inspiration. Kind of, it, it, it looks like it's wearing a, um, you know, a swimsuit. It's a, yeah. a full body yeah. like diving suit. Yeah, <laughs> or not diving suit, but just athlete kind of a swimsuit. Mm, yeah. I there is an in depth explanation as to why, but I'm gonna have to let Ron do that explanation when we get to him. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, but can can I first gush first for like 45 minutes straight? The line work is so 
fucking crispy. It's so clean. Yeah, it's definitely the it's best. It's so delicious. Yeah, that you've ever done. I, I, I just can't with this. This looks so lit. I need this to be real. I need this to be in Gen 10. It's, it's so, like, the shapes are so fun. The, do you guys know the Aklut from, like, Inuit folklore? This entity that's been depicted by the people to be an orca that walks on land like a wolf. Yeah, I thought you were going for that originally, but the fact that you got to combine all these other things in it, and still making it your own thing is just so cool while like ancient peoples were coming up with similar things. It's like pretty cool to think about. Oh, I'm looking at the aqua um, right now, goddamn. I mean, it was it was originally going to be like fully aquatic, like no legs. Mm. But it looked, but it sucked. So I. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is better. And this and this one rocks. Well, what you landed on is perfect. I was def when I was creating my high near, it was gonna be three stage, but I'm like, yeah, but I told everybody to do two, you know, just one stage. So there's no reason to do two. If I had considered the possibility of I'll just make three anyway, I probably wouldn't have done something like this as well. Cause really? I, I, I know the reason. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, we wait, we didn't hack the same PC. You went into an extra, <laughs> you went like, into an extra folder. <laughs> I, I was just like, I, I just, I don't know if, uh, if I can make it work and just you know, just one evolution stage. That's why mine is a little different than Virgo's because uh, right. it's, it's made to not be the full cycle, let's say. Uh, even though yep. for some reason I still like, even though like Ore Crunch is literally the best thing ever, I'm really attracted to not a croc. Like I think just- the, Me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pose, it's like a perfect- The mixture. name. The name is the name. perfect. It's literally a perfect Pokemon. It's a mixture of cool and cute at the same time. Well, you I captured know. so much of Ron's original design and then set up the next form so it's the good. eye like the eye you kept the mm, eye the same absolutely i hate yeah. to put more work on virgo but like i would be cool to see high near in your style or like redrawn and put in your layout <laughs> this layout is amazing this is yeah am beautiful. i weird for like yeah. obsessing over it right now it's so pretty no so I'm, I'm looking at mine and i'm like oh better redesign it oh oh and the shinies i forgot to show the shinies this, ah, this is the line oh, that's i'm really shiny hunting that i'm shiny hunting that one yeah, I want that one. <laughs> How do I how do I take this layout and use it without you know stealing? No, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, pulling, I'm way too I'm jealous. I'm doing the power world. I'm doing the power world. I'm stealing this. Um, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> at me at the oh comments. No, I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna say the the, the little on high near. There's a little like tuft of fur on the back that is supposed to look like a fin. Oh no. I mean, I knew that. <laughs> yeah, ob obviously. <laughs> now we have Bill Sue. All right. Go, go All right, Bonnie, you have those slides for me, right? <laughs> oh, dude, already done. Uh, I have, uh, I have Venmo you. Perfect. I, I knew I probably wasn't gonna do exactly what Ron did, um, so I kind of just did what I would want to do. Like, you know, it's based on like the uh, mouse deer, but I wanted mm -hmm. to make it more literal. So I tried to fuse some of these elements. Oh my oh. god! Oh, that is literally nice. a mouse and a deer, but with yeah. ghost. Wow. I so I wanted it to kind of like embody kind of like the decay of the forest and stuff like whenever animals pass. You're the only person who kept the fang like patterns on the stomach which I like. Cuz there are things that I just added while well, I did expand them slightly in my evolved form they were like uh, red herring just there for you guys to expand on to to juke. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> like also like the, the obviously mine doesn't have uh, spots in the back, but you you kept that, which is cool. The glowing thorny antlers is so <laughs> sick, and the fact that it glows with the green eyes that Ron set up. You guys know the cheat code is you add green. I like it. Oh. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it also pairs the the green and the pink colors. I was gonna say that, yeah. just oh, like yeah, Bonnie did, absolutely. and it, it's it's such a good pairing. There you go. I also Shots took inspiration right from like Wendigos. It's funny how both vampires have this like cryptid. S kind of look while you went full cryptid almost. Yeah. Um, and this is also unique to also Bilsu, so I always look forward to it. But like the lighting, he does the extra lighting that Sugimori doesn't didn't do or didn't establish. Always gives yeah, a nice pop. I like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also like again, you expand on the fangs, you turn them into like the the rib cage, the ribs on the. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that was a good. That was mm -hmm. very good idea. It's very mm -hmm. interesting that you guys, all of the deer, the deer trio, you guys all went <laughs> like the macabre. You guys went dark ghost. And I'm, in, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to understand that why. That is so true. Did you have a bad vibe from Hyenir? No. There's something in its eye. <laughs> For me, it's, there's something in its eye. Okay. I like I like taking your drawings and making something bad. That little tooth just kind of, you know, starts to make you think that there is something else yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. I guess I will talk now. 
even though I've been talking the whole time. I'll <laughs> let, let me let me reveal some stuff. It's an Indohias. <laughs> <laughs> There's its fin. It's a little fin, a tiny little fin at the top. Know. So Indohias is basically the ancestor of the whales. One of the uh, basically <laughs> oh the one that didn't go into the water. Like in terms of how it acts and what it does, it's basically yes, this like skittish Pokemon that runs around looking for food. And but when threatened by like its predators, like the avian predators, they quickly hide themselves by submerging in the nearest bodies of water. Their kicks are very powerful, and uh, they will use their legs as a last resort. So that comes from the mouse deer aspect because I, my idea was, what if an Indohias was still living, like literally, it would be closer to the mouse deer, but still an Indohias. So I gave it. Mm-hmm. So I combined it with it. almost like a Jurassic Park by giving it like a modern animal's DNA, basically, oh. to complete it. I did not know about yeah, the mouse deer. Yeah, yeah. Mouse deer is still kept in the evolution a little bit. I knew that Virgo was going to go complete whale or complete cetacean, <laughs> and I did not. I mean, I did, but, <laughs> but um, the name is pretty smart, not going to lie. Here is Duplicitous. Oh, oh, my God. oh nice. Oh, thank God that we did not do Orcus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's definitely more shark-like, but it's definitely a whale. Um, and again, I kept the the hooves because the idea is that what if just the Hindo highest went in a different direction and it didn't become a whale? It went a little more s- s- whale deer, I guess. Uh, they're masters of land and sea. They swim incredibly, you know, right. well and gal- but they also gallop in open fields. And it waits near the water surface, using its powerful jaws to, you know, clamp on its prey. Uh, but it's also incredibly sensitive to sound, like a whale, and can hear other duplicitouses mile- miles away. And the name comes from duplicitous mm-hmm. and you know c- c- Cetus because yes. it's Cetus from, for, the, for the whale but also it's based on the Ambulocetus so that's what the actual oh, nice. form is Ambulocetus with hooves and that's cr- uh, not a croc exactly so you <laughs> oh my <laughs> yeah. god it's but you actually made it as as a single stage transition exactly and that changes a lot <laughs> like that, that mm-hmm. so looking back at this again you can tell that there is more than just the fin. It's basically a, like a Indo Highest if it was like a starter Pokemon or early root Pokemon, because like you have to yeah. give it a huge head, which Indo Highest does not yeah. have, um, <laughs> yeah. and that's what threw people off and made it think that it was fully mouse deer. Uh, mouse deer do actually spend a lot of time in water. Yeah, and according to Wikipedia, at least, uh, this is used as anecdotal kind of evidence for the the, the theory of how small land ungulates eventually turned into whales mm, yeah also my textbook was missing this page is which is why i went to the severage chevrotain okay, <laughs> otherwise if i had this page i would have made a cool land shark thingy <laughs> this was a great set next round i gave them a little rock guy there's an interesting thing about the rock guy that i'm going to talk about this is ronk <laughs> my name with a k it's ronk. you i feel like it this was a little bit more obvious in terms of like what it is but I'm not going to say it. I am going to say, now the question is, have you guys seen this before? Yes. It was made in a previous Ron video, uh, making Pokemon from my walk. Thank God it was just one oh. person. I wanted just one. I, I, I recognized it, but I did not immediately place it. And so I didn't like make the connection of where exactly it came from until after I'd already designed mine. Thank God. Libris, you're perfect. I will. I want to kiss. I want to kiss you. Here is the original, by the way. It's just a redesign. This is literally. Oh, okay, that's what I was wondering. Oh. <laughs> I redesigned the literal first fake one I ever made in my on in my creating fake one series, basically, because mm. I always thought it needed redesigning, and I think I did a fine job redesigning it. Let us see what Bonnie did. Here we go. Tell me if I'm wrong. Bam. Thank you. Here's wrong because you're a little wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong, obviously. It's literally, obviously, a praying statue. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'll educate the audience from my research, and then we'll see if, you know, how exactly right or wrong I am. But these are Jizo statues, you know, also called Ojizo-san or Ojizo-sama, basically the guardian deity of children and travelers. So uh, you'll find these at Buddhist temples and graveyards. When I was in Japan, I seen it. I'd seen these before when I was developing some characters. Um, So when I looked at this guy, I'm like, all right, he's a cutie little patootie. Um, We got to get him buffed up. And so so I named him the devoted Pokemon Gemunk or Gem and Monk. That's a good name. Um, mm -hmm, Thank you. Looking at this guy in the big ears, I mean, I don't think... 
it's a stretch to imagine that um, maybe some elephantine kind of direction <laughs> could be the case. So I looked at Lord Ganesha from Hinduism, the remover of obstacles, obviously the Buddha, not Buddhai, who is the laughing Buddha as Westerners call him. Buddha and Buddhai are different people. Okay, I'm glad you said the it. More you know. What happens when we reach Nirvana? Enter Enlightenment. The pious Pokemon. So uh, in Tibetan Buddhism, right, uh, there's something called Tuktam. You know, if you guys have heard the beautiful yet haunting concept of monks dying in a seated pose. I've seen it. Right. I was there. <laughs> he was there. Uh, and then he reached enlightenment and here we are. He's slathering mud on his body to make this toga to keep him cool. And that over time, the layers and layers of mud and rock harden. Um, and thus keep him in place, getting him ready for enlightenment. Enlightenment is a solid mass of psychic energy in a rock casing made hardened by its mental fortitude. They absorb energy of all forms through its third eye and cast its ability through its trunk, the only part of its body that is capable of moving. Qfint and Kaparaja seek out Enlightenment before they migrate, seeking good fortune and blessing before they depart. So the nose piece of your guy, I pictured like almost like an accordion as this guy got heavier, the trunk kind of like <laughs> stretching out. So you can see at the bottom of my trunk is your gem for the nose. Yeah, I love that part. <laughs> the stat distribution is really almost the same as mine. Really? Let's go, hacker, hacker bin. Uh, but yeah, that's Enlightened Fint. I hope you reach Nirvana at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you reach Nirvana. I should end every video like that. This is going to be so cool because I think this is going to be the one that is, is going to actually feel like actual split evolutions. Because I think as a statue, a statue you can like mold into different things. I feel like all of our evolutions will be believable. You're right. They could be like the Eevee of statues. I, was, I, I wanted at least one of these to feel like an Eevee almost. And again, I love the face. You're really good at giving character. The silhouette is, I'll admit it, uh, it's, it, the silhouette is incredibly boring. It's statuesque, naturally, literally. Um, so the face will have to do heavy lifting. And I also set up the face for the trunk to curve up at the top to kind of create the eyes of the original. So the, mm, the, yeah. the bottom half could read either as eyes or a smile. Um, huh. And so it's, gonna, oh, it's a little bit I didn't of even mind. see that until you said that. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be a little bit of a mind meld kind of thing. Like, is the yeah. eyes the curvature at oh, the top wow. or is it the... Yeah, yeah. So that's, I was that's reading it. I lifted. Makes it look I a lot more happy. I was reading it as tusks. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to avoid tusks. Wow, only that's because, genius. Uh, well, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, of course I meant to do that. But I removed the tusks to show like a pacifist side. Like, you know, it's mostly sitting in prayer right like doing yeah. that thukdom i was talking about from tibetan buddhism so it was a deliberate choice to you know remove the tusks just i really like how because it's actually made a rock the robes just end at the bottom i think my favorite part is also the border around like the nails and me too i think that's yeah, like stonework or something exactly molding. what i was going for is yeah it's supposed to be very subtle what's funny is that we both did pious pokemon <laughs> Holy crap! Let's go! <laughs> so next is Libris, right? Yeah. This time I did not do exactly the same thing that Bonnie did. Thank you. What I saw in Bronze Original was a Buddha statue. What happens when the Buddha statue reaches enlightenment? Oh! oh wow. Wow. That's, so cool. Thank That's you. smart! Thinking out of the box! That's smart! So after many years of meditation, its spirit has separated from its physical body. Eternally calm and knowledgeable, gnome are often sought for guidance. It uses the gems on its head and body to channel its spiritual energy. Love gnome. It now has no need for material needs. It has, has no need for material goods, mm. including its physical <laughs> self. So the, the spirit comes out of the statue. It maintains the the gem of the nose as now the gem of the forehead yeah, that also wow. represents the, so the, good. the the third eye y'all are very smart the arc of light i was thinking of something similar to like what cresselia has for example 
um, something that's like Arceus coated. Not exactly physical. It's kind of intangible. If necessary, it can close itself back into into the shell. Hmm. I love the imprint or just the the hole where the nose used to be on the statue is fun. It's very clever and fun. <laughs> if you look closely, I didn't even outline almost anything in black. So only the gems and the statue mm, pieces the are outlined in black. Those are the only oh. things that are physical. Yeah. Fair. That's really nice. <laughs> what? Is there a guard for? What is that? that? Yes, that was a guard for. That, that's my hey. that, that's my message tone for my when my wife texts me. Makes sense. Um, and were, weren't we not just saying green and pink combination earlier? Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Gnome saw all realities in 10 million universes. Get gnomed. Get gnomed. Gnome <laughs> <laughs> would be amazing. He would be amazing. I also did enlighten Pokemon, so you got that correct. Okay. All right. Even All right. even though, not gonna lie, yours is way more enlightened. Both of yours are way more enlightened than mine. <laughs> uh, just another small detail that I didn't mention earlier: the gem on the chest is supposed to reference like a chakra kind of thing. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, normally you'd have like one on the head, one on the chest, yeah. and like f- five others. Uh, <laughs> yes, so I, obviously, I didn't do that many, high. but. <laughs> Put one on the butt. I don't know why I'm just. I, I want to comment on the mustache, but I don't have anything to say about the mustache. I just want to bring attention to the mustache. <laughs> I've seen him at the temple. He <laughs> makes me like chicken curry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can say that I'm Indian. It's okay. <laughs> Next is Virgo. How do I make something relating to Buddhism without cultural appropriation in some sort of way? I was by saying really... that it's from Buddhism. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Which I also did um, Buddhism. For some reason, I did not think he was a rock. I thought he was made of sand. So I went with sand. Ooh. Uh, Silt and sand, like liquidy kind of. Good. And I was thinking about Shaolin monks, uh, Shaolin uh, Kung Fu. I was thinking about monks who have gone to the specific temple, who train all their lives to really hone their skills. So while there is a case of enlightenment and meditation in mind, it is also like how to make the best version of yourself in the living world. Buddhism has so many different like sects, sects. Hey yo. Yeah. And that's perfect for this challenge. I agree. Typically, when it's just normal, it has two arms. But um, this is a weight kiln. Whoa! Whoa! Oh my God! It's inside of him. He's there! He's Uh. baby! (laughs) So basically I thought about like the origin, the pre-evolution are, you know, the the monks in training and they all would have a master, right? Who has lived long. All you can, all you have to see is that the deck entry says that it is not completely defined whether the inner core or the outer shell is in control. So we don't know where the sapience is. Everything that they believe in they will keep it to their heart. And that is why at the very center, you know, is the pre evolved form, but it is basically still. This, um, as compared to the outer shell, which is, which is in constant movement because it's made of sand. Also, matter mind is an ability that I was thinking, a hidden ability that I was thinking. It either makes all special attacks physical attacks, or it switches physical and special attacks, like th- their their oh, category. Oh, oh, cool! That would be so interesting. Yeah. Tell us in the um, comments how that could work, and if it's good. <laughs> it, it it loves the art of fighting. It it loves to teach. This is definitely a mythical, regardless of what you say. What's delicious here? Is that inner green that's bouncing off the orange outside? You bet it is. <laughs> uh, I, I love that movement that you capture, like at the waist, that's spiraling. Like I can see this guy animated by the single image. To me, it looks like something that reads out of like Breath of the Wild or, or Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, that's so very much. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was looking at Buddhist statues, specifically in like in Japan. So at first, mm-hmm. I was gonna like try to do. Um, kind of like the Oni fangs, but then it ended up looking like eyebrows and a mustache, which I liked way more. It was just, right. it was just mm-hmm. serendipitous. It just happened perfectly. Like I drew it and I was, oh, this is perfect. I'm trying to see who's, who has the most delicious design. Who would I want to eat more? <laughs> <laughs> now, don't ask Anakin Skywalker. I think it's Bilsu's turn. I think, I don't know if it is. You guys tell I me. Think so. I think it is. <laughs> Let's go Bilsu. Let's All go right. my boy. You guys are just really good at doing all the research. I try to do like <laughs> no research. I just take things, what I see, and I just run with it. Saw a peaceful rock monk statue, and I wanted to corrupt it. 
So. <laughs> oh my god. Basically, Ronk here would evolve only through battle experience because after being a peaceful monk statue, it kind of awakens to the reality of battling and it fully just embraces it. So. Hmm. Here we have Stonger. Oh. <laughs> Nice. So oh, you're, no. you're the only one who did not go in a very Buddhist you know, yeah. direction. Took some inspiration from like Oni's, the Oni Club. Exactly what I was thinking, yeah. Um, That's very good. That's smart. Also took some inspiration from like Scion from League of Legends. God damn. I saw the Oni Clubs right away. So it's still, yeah. you know, fitting in, in the realm of where we're all kind of <laughs> operating. But they're all very much natural evolutions. And this one, that, again, this is like... I feel like the most natural evolution of them all. Another green and pink one. <laughs> Holy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it, even its eyes still live in the nook of the previous eyes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like its oh, eyes have been yeah. opened, but not to peace. Enlightenment is overrated, guys. Become <laughs> ogre. And oh, wow. I'm, now let me look at the detail. The rendering of the, of the spikes is very, very beautiful. I like doing rocks. Yeah, this is the, technically the ideal yeah. body for like strength. <laughs> you may not like it, but this is what peak is, boy. You guys just made enlightenment way more creative. Like you guys actually went above and beyond like what enlightenment is supposed to be. Mine is enlightened, but the point is that like its inspiration, he's still a, a guy. Ronk, the pious Pokemon, he's a you know devout Pokemon who meditates for most of every day, basically all day. They stand perfectly still, even when in pain. They, uh, Ronk occasionally train under waterfalls to gain enlightenment as the top layer of their body erodes. In battle, they reflect light from their noses to blind opponent. So yeah, the whole point is that it becomes smoother <laughs> when it evolves, because it's under the waterfall all the time. Here's the new redesigned of Boldeye. Oh, <laughs> it's cute! Oh, wow, <laughs> it's super cute. <laughs> we... We both have the Akuma bead necklace. Do we? But yours is way Yeah, shy. we do, actually, yeah. What's funny is that, yeah, you mentioned uh, Budai, who is not the Buddha, and mm -hmm. thank God you Old said die. that, because now I don't have to say it. But the other Jeez. thing that nobody realized, even though, again, it was supposed to be that, I didn't want you guys to realize, is that it's a pig. <laughs> they're, um, they're like, you know... Oh. Oh. Yeah, the no shape, I can see that now, yeah. Yeah, so I was so glad, like, when Bonnie was like, basically gave the same inspiration thank god he thought it was or just interpreted it more as something that becomes an elephant but now instead of like the baggy ears of budai it's floppy pig ears um and it's very right. jolly and he's enlightened yeah but that just means that he just roams around and doesn't have any possessions and is just the best guy as can be like, he doesn't become a god, he becomes just the best kind of person ever to hang around with. <laughs> like, I want to be around Goldeye. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, he's a you know, jolly Pokemon, roams around, never acquiring any possessions or attachment. It loves bringing joy to children and will occasionally present them uh, with a precious stone. These kids don't know what to do with those gems. And it dances around in battle, predicting the opponent's every move, because, you know, it's psychic type and has the third eye. I like him. Oh yeah, let me show you the original. It sucks. <laughs> the, original, oh the original didn't have the pig element, and it just looked like Budai, like a Budai statue. Just, uh, that's from 2018. Your guy is so cute. We're, we're, I was talking about movement with Virgos. I can see this guy moving too. I can just see him mm -hmm. dancing around, bouncing up and down. Like the shapes are so fun. The rendering's great. This guy would be on my party too. He looks very jolly. Grumpig hates this guy. Yeah. That's why Grumpig is the way he is. He's seen him and seen all his pearls. Yeah, I, I think many of these would actually work quite well as split evolutions. I don't know. Um, leave a I like to make sure you get a part two. Yeah, if you want right? to see a part oh, two, true. please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. Go check out everybody else's channels because clearly they do amazing stuff and they're all in the description. I mean, if that's the end, that's the end. <laughs> Good work, everyone. Thank you. Good job, everyone. Find enlightenment.